Hey guys, this is a video about the solutions that you guys gave to a puzzle I posted. If you haven't tried to solve that, do that first. Everyone else, wow, thank you for all the responses. I'll start this by recapping the puzzle quickly. We have many spies who are in teams of two. If they're caught by the enemy, then they'll each be interrogated separately. For the interrogation, there are three known questions and each spy is asked just one. The first task is to train your spies so that they do these three things. On average, for each question asked, half say yes and half no. If teammates are asked the same question, then they must have the same answer. And finally, regardless of what question is asked, the teammates only say the same thing half the time. Then you have a second task to show that this third criteria is silly. So let's try and satisfy the rule that if teammates are asked the same question, they must give the same answer. But remember, they can't communicate with each other after they're caught. So the first spy can't tell her partner, I got asked question one and said yes. Make sure you say yes if you're asked that question too. So they both have to decide what their answers will be for each question beforehand. This seems like the only solution, and it's the one that most of you suggested. If I may draw an analogy here, suppose that you have two electrons and someone tells you that if you measure their spins in the same direction, then you always get the same value for each, i.e. they're both up or they're both down in that direction. Then the perfectly reasonable thing to think is, they must have decided whether they'll both be up or down in that direction beforehand. But let's come back to our puzzles so I can show you why we've already contradicted rule number three. Let's say you've given each pair their answers to memorize in any way you want. How often do spies say the same thing? If you've trained one group to always say yes or always say no, they obviously always say the same thing, which isn't so good. The other option is two yeses and one no, or vice versa. How often do these guys say the same thing? Obviously, if they're asked the same question, they're going to agree. So now they need to agree less often if they're asked different questions to even it out. Is that the case? Let's check. Say the first spy is asked question one and the second is asked question two. Then they say the same thing. Whereas if he's asked the third question, then they don't. And similarly for the rest. Now overall, we see that they agree more than half the time. So this is true no matter how you decide what answers they say. They're always going to break rule three. So we've just proved that our spies can't come in with predetermined answers, but they can't communicate either. So is it just impossible to do this task? Let's go back to our analogy with the electrons. Remember quantum superposition, where quantum things do all possible options until they're observed. That means our electrons are both up and both down at the same time till they're measured. Philosophically, that sounds different to having predetermined answers, but surely, in practice, there's no difference between that and if they were both up, but we just didn't know it. We could give the spies each one electron entangled to their partners, and they could measure it in one of three directions, depending on what question they're asked. That way, if they're asked the same question, they will give the same answer. But again, surely this is no better than having predetermined answers. Well, that's where Bell's theorem comes in. Bell showed that if you set it up just right, the spies could use this machine to make sure they only say the same answer half the time. I talked about how Bell's theorem works in detail in this video, so if you're interested, check it out. The main reason it works though is because entangled particles can affect each other even in circumstances where no normal objects can communicate with each other. Now it's clear why you don't actually want to use this setup because we just proved that no other thing in the universe besides entanglement can account for you guys obeying these three criteria. So if the enemy noticed that your spies did, they'd know you schemed against them. So that's my solution. But more interestingly, let's talk about yours. A whole bunch of you immediately recognize that this is based on Bell's theorem. That's awesome. But I'm also really pleased that most of you didn't and instead you tried to answer the question just using logic. What impressed me was that many of you derived the impossibility part yourself or got the main idea of the proof. Amongst physicists, Bell's theorem is notorious for being difficult. 
Maybe that's because it's too scary with its machines and measurement axes. So I was trying to take the physics context out and see what you guys did with it. And I was hugely impressed by how earnestly you guys tackled this problem. Also how creatively. I especially enjoyed reading some of the backstories you gave for the spies and their enemies. Anyway, I was planning on going through individual solutions, but wow, there were so many. Instead, if you don't understand why your solution does or doesn't work, please leave a comment here about it and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you again for participating. I hope you know that this wasn't about getting it right. It was to show you that you already have the tools and the capability to tackle serious physics problems on your own. So to everyone who participated, well done.